All right. So the first thing we're going to do to uh, to get this Z-axis carriage or this arm assembly off um, to adjust the bearing back here. So this arm will actually glide super smoothly. Uh, the printer I'm working with is actually a Gen 1. Um, it actually has the, uh, the, the backlash nut on top here. Um, so what I'm going to do, and what we'll do first is actually remove this top plate because we're going to be pulling this carriage all the way off. Now I've already had this top off so it's already easy. Um, but just on the Gen 1s, there's four screws. See it comes off. Four screws are there. We're good to go. Next thing we'll do is we'll go to our menu down here. Obviously, we're going to go to Tools, Manual, make sure it's on 10 millimeter. And we're just going to up arrow to jog that Z axis up. Essentially, until this whole carriage just comes right off. And there we go. Carriage just comes off. And what you'll notice is there's three bearings back here. Sorry for the lighting. You'll see there's three bearings back here. We'll be adjusting this center one here to get a good grip um, where it's not super tight. You may ask about this uh, without an anti-backlash nut. I'll address that, oh, excuse me, I'll address that in a little bit um, and what this is and what I've done here. But uh, now let's go ahead and get this arm apart and then we'll uh, show how to adjust that. All right, so now again, this carriage was off, I went ahead and removed the nut inside of here. Um, and I want to show just kind of how tight these are from the factory. Um, and, and what this does is this actually affects some of the Z banding issues um, that some people have been seeing. Um, and, and for those of you who have actually pulled these off before, to get the stepper motor out, you've noticed when putting these back on that they are super tight. So without that nut in there, we can get it started, get to a point, and it, it takes a bit of force to push that on. Now the problem is, this is a bearing assembly. This should run smooth. This arm should drop under its own weight, but it does not. It is extremely, it is very tight to get in out. And when you do, and if you hold back here and you pull this out, this arm, this backbone flexes. So as soon as you pull this off, you feel that give up a little bit. So we're gonna adjust this bearing block assembly to where this just drops on and this will fall under its own weight. Once it falls under its own weight, that's where we want it to be. And uh, we'll get much better printing results. So we'll go ahead and take this apart and overview that. All right. So we want to get this carriage piece away from the arm. This is actually simple to do. We got four bolts here, 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 and here. Allen wrench that came with the printer will actually fit that. And then you can just take these out. Loosen them up. Get these off. And then we'll just set the arm out of the way. Just like so. There's our arm. Again, this is from the Gen 1, so the bracket is sideways on the arm. We'll just set that away. Got the four screws in here. We'll just dump those out, and there we go. Now we can see we have all three bearings here. We'll flip it over, and we can see on this one we actually have an adjustment point 
for this center bearing here. And here's the fun part on how to adjust this. I'm going to have to find, oh, let me just one second, I'll find the Allen wrench to fix that. Can't remember if this was a two and a half or a two that fit back here. I want to say it was a two. So, yep, what I'm going to do is come back here on these two, and we're just going to slightly loosen these up. These two grub screws inside of here, just slightly, just so they don't grab and tighten anymore. And it might be hard to see in there, but they're in there. Now, we take our big Allen wrench again. Notice this fits in here. And we can actually It's nice and tight. You're gonna have to give it some oomph to break that screw loose. There we go. So that screw is now loose. And we're good to go. So what we want to do is we want to bring this center bearing closer in to the center of the assembly here. To do so, you'll notice in the back here, <clears throat> excuse me, as we actually can see where it rotates, which direction. So rotating the direction here, see on the back side, this is going to be clockwise, which should bring this center in because this is off to the right. So let's go clockwise and we'll be able to allow this to spin over. <clears throat> to do so, just put our wrench back in, and we should, if it's not all gummed up, we should be able to turn it a little bit here. Now, of course, that may be stuck in place, but should be able to get it to turn. And it doesn't want to do it. Now there it goes. It broke loose. Okay, good. You can see now we can get this to spin. So when we're in the center like so, that screw is in the center which still does not put our bearing in the center. It's just still slightly off center, but I can tell you this is not going to be snug in the rail system. So you'll want to work on it. It'll take a couple times trial and error, but you want to get it to where it goes in smooth and under a weight or its own weight, this assembly will kind of start sliding or falling down the rail on its own. So I'm going to work on getting this adjusted properly. Don't need to spend too much time on a video of the process of adjusting this. Um, it's already explained how it works. You adjust it. Once it's good, you lock these two tight, assemble it back together, and you're good to go. Uh, I have no need to video all the process of trial and error to get the right uh, tension on it. But once I've got it, we'll come back and we'll visit and we'll, we'll take a look at this position um, and then we'll uh, take a look at how it glides on the, uh, the rail itself. All right, so this has now been fully adjusted. You can see, if you compare this to the video clip earlier, we've slightly got this twisted over where it actually took this center bearing here a little bit more towards the center. Um, everything here is still nice and tight and snug. This would be a good time too, just to grab a Phillips screwdriver. Go ahead and snug up these screws. Uh, there's no Loctite or nothing on them. Uh, sometimes they come loose. Um, but once that's all done, this assembly here, you've test fit it. It, it, it. You'll have a little tiny bit of resistance and we'll see that when it goes on, but you'll see what I mean by it falling under its own weight. So once that's done, what you want to do is go ahead and uh, just kind of wipe down the back of your, your arm here. 
we can take our uh, our our guide assembly and we'll just go ahead and get it reassembled um, you could put some Loctite on these screws I don't think it's actually necessary um, to do so uh, just snug them up nice and tight they'll, uh, they'll do their job once you get them screwed in just ever so slightly just to help kind of keep this assembly straight what we'll do is we'll uh, so how it kind of wobbles here we'll just take it and what I, what I usually do is I just push it straight up from the bottom of the assembly up is what I'll do that'll kind of get it so it's all even all around I'll tighten these up get them all nice and snug really tight by hand and then we'll go take a look at the printer once uh, this is done and we slide this back on we will see how easy and free this moves and what we want to expect compared to how it was before we pull it off and adjusted it so now that we've got it all nice and tight we're going to leave this off um, again we'll address that in just a minute but first let's go ahead and take a look at how and what this, this new adjusted assembly will do on that guide rail. All right, now we're back to our printer. We have our reassembled carriage or arm assembly. Um, again, there's no anti-backlash nut or no palm nut inside of here. That way we can allow this to just freely slide over our z-axis rod here so we're going to line it up now again see how it just kind of sets there if this is adjusted well just a little tap we'll get this on now we want to see this fall under its own weight this right here has a little bit of resistance as it falls this has no lateral play to the side to side or up and down i mean it's just as sturdy as it was before except now we have a much easier sliding z-rail assembly um if this feels notchy at all whoops if this feels notchy at all go ahead and wipe down the inner rails here with tissue wipe down and clean the uh the bearing rollers here and you can just apply a little bit of grease to the uh, the rail system here um, and that will take that uh, bumpiness or other notchiness away because you know old grease or oil in there attracts dust and it that, that kind of helps too but this right here is what you're looking for when you adjust you see I can just hold it as soon as I let it go it's under its own weight. It'll fall into the bottom, but I want it to bottom out on the, the stop sensor. This is what you're looking for right here. That's smooth, uh, not notchy, and everything. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the difference between the palm nuts that I've actually switched to and the brass anti-backlash nuts. All right, so now we're going to take a look at what I what I mentioned before um, to not pay attention to was the palm nut that I had installed. Um, of course, the printers come. You've got your nice, lovely brass anti-backlash nut, the way these work. There's notches here. These intertwine. These will This will thread on the, the Z-axis rod. And what that spring does is it puts pressure, so any play that develops in this um, anti-backlash nut on the threads the spring will actually push outward um, I'm not a fan of these so what I've done is I've actually taken it and I've replaced it with a standard this is a TR 8x2 uh, Delrin palm nut that I've actually started putting on all my printers this takes any slop out of from using the uh, the brass anti-backlash nuts 
and these work great. Uh, cool thing is, is they're a direct bolt pattern too. So these just, on the Gen 1, they drop in on top, screws going from the top. On the Gen 2s, these actually go underneath in this orientation, um, and they're threaded. But what I've done is I've designed and printed a, uh, a piece that goes on the bottom here that will actually uh, hold some M3 lock nuts and then just use some longer M3 uh, socket heads to go through and hold it. Um, I'll have the link to that as well over to Thingiverse uh, once it's up and available. But for now, this is just the Gen 1 I'm addressing. Um, but yeah, even on the Gen 2, it's still the same bolt pattern. So this just drops in here and these bolt holes will actually line up exactly to what's already in there. So I'm going to go ahead and get this, uh, it's the screws back in here. Then we'll get back over to the printer and we'll get the assembly on, getting it all buttoned up and give it a go. Okay, back to our printer. We're going to go ahead and now get this final uh, assembly button back up. You can see now the, the palm nut is installed. The screws uh, on the Gen 1s, we can use the existing screws and washers, get them nice and snug and tight. Um, get it in there, again, with the longer stem going down into the arm. And then to get this on, because we now have the nut on there, we can get it started. And then we'll just use our menu option, as we did before, to take it off to put it back on. Let the fretted rod pull it back down how it's supposed to. All right, get it down just a little bit more here. And this is now sturdy as can be. All right, this doesn't, uh, you know, we have no up and down flex. I mean, the whole printer is flexing because of the shelf it's on, but this arm is good to go. The only thing I do now is just go ahead at this point, just going to put our top uh, little top plate back on. Go through the bed leveling process as normal. And uh, good to go. If you were experiencing some of that Z banding issue as before, uh, by doing this, you should no longer experience Z-banding or it should greatly reduce it. Um, again, I've got six Mars here. I've done this to a few of them already. One particularly was having some Z-banding issues and that carriage was extremely tight inside there. This arm and carriage was extremely tight, but as soon as I did it and got it to where it fell under its own weight, Z banding gone completely. Um, but yeah, so this is uh, done. We'll throw a plate on it. We'll give it a good print and uh, it's good to go. And then we'll work on, sorry, my office area is a little messy, but work on getting a few more of them done. Uh, they're all down for maintenance right now. I do it all at the same time, but uh, yep, good to go. If you have any questions, go ahead and shoot a comment. I'd be more than happy to help you.